we have? Do I have a translator? There you are. Uh, well, good evening and welcome. It is, uh, it is really a true pleasure for me to be here in Taiwan. And I know over the last couple of days I've met many of you and had a chance to share the vision of Manitech, but also hear from you and answer your questions and find out what's on your heart. So, in my opinion, it's been a very successful trip and I appreciate it. And uh, what I'd like to do tonight is just share a little bit about the history of the technology of Manitech. And uh, do I have slides here by any chance? Do I? Okay, they can put them up if they want to. Can you see that okay? Well, what I want to start with is uh, just a little bit of perspective. And uh, what's important to understand is that in the world, healthcare as we know it today, is going through a tremendous change. Uh, governments and people have determined that just Western medicine uh, is not all there is to finding health. In fact, we found that most of the chronic conditions that people suffer from, there are no good treatments. And so what is happening is we, the people around the world, are turning our efforts towards ancient wisdom. And uh, this man puts a great perspective to ancient wisdom. This is uh, Paracelsus, who is known as the father of modern medicine or pharmacology. And in the 1600s, he said something very profound. He said, everything man needs to sustain health is provided in nature, and it is the job of science to go find those things. So tonight I'm gonna to tell you an amazing story of how science went into nature to find a discovery that I think is going to impact the world. And it is the story of glyconutrients. Next. The story begins back in the 1980s when the dietary supplement business and health food in the United States really began to explode. And it was because so many people were so desperately looking for ways to improve their quality of life. And one of the products that came onto the marketplace was made from a plant called aloe vera. Now the aloe vera plant had a rich history for supporting the healing process. And actually since the beginning of recorded time, uh, we have seen aloe vera used in cultures all over the world. So historically, they knew there was something very special in the gel of the aloe vera plant. And so when products came onto the market using aloe vera, they started talking about claims like the miracle of aloe. And we have a legislative or an, uh, a regulatory agency in the United States called the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. And they approached the aloe vera industry and they said, you're making some pretty outlandish claims. In other words, you're claiming that there's something in aloe vera that is very unique and very special, but you have no idea what it is. So you should use science to determine what the active ingredient in the aloe vera plant is. And so the aloe vera industry uh, pooled its resources, its financial resources, and hired a young research pharmacologist who was teaching at the medical school in Dallas by the name of Dr. Bill McAnally. And they asked, they asked Dr. McAnally to find the medically active molecule in the aloe vera gel. And you know, he thought it was probably a protein or an enzyme or something that everyone already understood. But it turned out to be something completely different. The active ingredient in the aloe vera plant turned out to be a long chain sugar molecule made up of a very unique sugar called mannose. He also found that this molecule was labile, which means that it is naturally destroyed when you pick the plant. So within about 24 hours, the activity in the aloe vera gel disappeared. So the first thing that he did is he found a way to stabilize the molecule so it would remain active. And the second thing he started to do is look at what benefits it would provide to human physiology. And he was really, really amazed when he started finding these things. 
he started doing immune marker research, looking at how this unique molecule from aloe vera enhanced the immune function and started publishing that information. The problem was no one in the scientific community uh, thought that he was for real. And the reason is because no one had an understanding that there was any value to sugar. In biochemistry, all that we knew about sugar is that sugar was the main source of energy for the human cell. And no one thought that there was any other biological function of sugar other than energy production. So when Dr. McAnally started talking about a sugar molecule that had a therapeutic effect, all of his colleagues laughed at him because they said that wasn't possible. Well, his research was not false. It was actually showing exactly what was happening. And so he made some products with this stabilized aloe vera molecule. And he approached another doctor in Dallas. This is Dr. Reg McDaniel, who was the chief of staff, the head doctor, at a major hospital in the Dallas area. And he convinced Dr. McDaniel that he should do a pivotal trial study using this aloe vera molecule on the AIDS patients. And the reason he picked AIDS is because nothing in medicine was working. And so these patients had absolutely no hope. And since AIDS is an immune deficiency disease, he felt like this aloe molecule may make a difference. So Dr. McDaniel did three pivotal trial studies. The first study used 17 patients, and 70% of them had a very dramatic improvement. And of course, Dr. McDaniel was overwhelmed because nothing in medicine was doing this. He also realized that one pivotal trial would not convince anyone. So he did a second pivotal trial and duplicated everything he had done in the first. And again, he found out that about 70% of the patients had dramatic improvement in all of their clinical work. Then he decided that he believed he could predict which patients would respond. By looking at their baseline immune markers, he felt like he could tell which ones would respond to this aloe molecule. So he did a third pilot study, which is called a predictability pilot. And he predicted out of 26 patients, after looking at their immune markers, that 16 of those would respond positively. And he was 93% correct. So they took this data that they collected and they started presenting it at AIDS conferences around the world. Now at AIDS conferences, you have the best researchers in the world coming together to collectively talk about what they're looking for. And so when Dr. McAnally and Dr. McDaniel showed this data, no one believed them because it was a sugar, not a drug. But actually, one company that was at one of the AIDS conferences did believe them. It is a company called Salve, which is the world's largest manufacturer of vaccine. And Salve was working on a very particular problem at the time. They found that in agriculture, when chickens were raised in chicken houses, that the stress involved in raising chickens caused a cancer. And this cancer is called Merrick's disease and it was destroying about 35% of the total production of all chicken production. And their best vaccine against Merrick's disease was only achieving about 65% protection. So they saw Dr. McAnally and Dr. McDaniel's work and asked if they could use that aloe molecule as an adjuvant in their Merrick's vaccine. And when they added that sugar molecule from aloe vera, to their Merrick's vaccine, it increased the protection to almost 100%. Today, Salve still uses the aloe vera molecule as an adjuvant in all of its vaccine. Next. The next thing that they found that in agriculture, that this aloe molecule in a purified form also was very potent in fighting various disease processes. And so, for instance, they found that it was effective in the treatment of feline leukemia, which is leukemia in cats. And the reason that was important is because no drug worked on that problem. And so now we're getting towards the end of the 1980s, and they decided they wanted to bring this aloe molecule into the market as a drug for human use. And to get a drug approved, 
you must first do phase one toxicity study because all drugs are toxic. And the way you conduct toxicity studies is you take your investigative new drug and you start and you start injecting it into laboratory mice. And you keep increasing the dose until you've killed half the mice. And that becomes your toxicity threshold for human beings. So every drug on the market has to go through this process. When they injected the aloe vera molecule into mice, nothing happened because it is a non-toxic sugar. And they increased the dose, increased the dose, increased the dose, and could never kill them out. And so their application for drug use was denied and turned down. So now they were stuck. They didn't know how they were going to bring this unique molecule for human use into the market. Again, not to mention their colleagues still laughed at them for thinking that a sugar molecule had a therapeutic value. But that all began to change by 1990. In 1990, there was a brand new science called glycobiology that evolved. Glyco is the Greek word for sugar. So glycobiology is the study of the biological functions of particular sugar molecules. Because with the development of the electron microscope, we were able to look closer and closer at the human cell. And what we found were sugars sticking off the surface of the cell. These are called glycoproteins because it's long strands of sugars attached to a protein. And through the study of glycobiology, we began to understand that all biological data is transferred through sugars. And so sugars are the letters of the alphabet of cellular communication. And so everything that interacts with our cells is communicated through sugars. So for instance, it's how our, sure our cells can determine toxins, viruses, and bacteria. It is also how our immune systems work. That large white cell in the corner is an immune cell. And what immune cells have on them are receptor sites. And these receptors go across the surface of all of our cells and read those sugars. And it asks three questions. Number one, are you me and are you okay? And if the immune cell recognizes what it's touching as me and okay, it turns it loose and goes to the next cell. And the second question it is asked is, are you me and are you not okay? And so when a cell is damaged, it expresses that through a sugar. And when the immune cell recognizes that, it orchestrates repair. And that is called normal human physiology. It doesn't take a doctor. It doesn't take a drug. It happens automatically in your body. And what they've learned is that sugars are absolutely necessary for that function to occur. Next. In 1996, a remarkable discovery was made that was published in Harper's Biochemistry, which is a medical school textbook. What they did is they identified the eight sugars that are used by our cells for cell-to-cell -cell communication. So doctors McAnally and McDaniel came to me in 1996 because we had started our company in 1994. And one of the first products that we sold was Dr. McAnally's unique aloe vera product. And we found that that aloe vera product really truly made a difference in the lives of people who were health challenged. So in 1996, they approached me with this. And they said, here is our scientific hypothesis. We now know that the human cell needs those sugars for the immune system to work appropriately but only two of those sugars are in our diet. The rest have almost been eliminated. And when we add one of those sugars back, which was mannose from aloe vera, we saw very profound results. They told me if they could go find plant sources of all of those sugars, they believed that they would find something that would work much better, much quicker, much more effectively than just aloe vera by itself. And so that's exactly what they did. We found plant sources from all over the world that had unique sugar structures until we found plants with rich sources of those sugars. 
and then we combine those into a product that we call amber toast. The other thing they told me is that they believe that this was a new category of vital nutrients, just like vitamins and minerals, or amino acids, or essential fatty acids. That these sugars were just important, as important, and actually more important in terms of immune function. And they felt that if they were right, we needed to protect that discovery. And so in 1996 and 1997, we filed patents on that composition all over the world. And today we have received patents in 20 countries around the world. In fact, in 2005, we received our patent in the United States. Well, since 1996, we have seen an explosion of information on sugars.